Bitcoin as we know it started trading at about 0.0008 cents. By July of 2010, Bitcoin was worth about 8 cents. Now this is a 100x on the investment. Now when you look back at this, everyone will want to invest. But the reason you want to invest is because you see where it is now. Which means when you look at the past, you get filled with regrets. And those regrets make you think that if you were in that time, you would have invested. I am sorry to bust your bubble. We are in the present and from 2010, we are in the future. Which means time has passed. The best we can do now is search for the next crypto that will repeat or will do something close to what Bitcoin has done already. Hello and welcome to the channel. Now today we'll be looking at a cryptocurrency that has as much risks that Bitcoin had back in 2010. Now much risks means much gains. Now if you have noticed, I take some time to make these kinds of videos because I take a lot of time to do thorough research. I don't just come here and talk about a crypto without knowing its ins and outs. Which means today you will get filled with all the information or most of the info you need about this cryptocurrency. Spoiler alert, it has tremendous potential. Now guys and gals, I would like to draw your attention to this guy. Who is this guy, you might ask? His name is David Lancashire. In 2007, he was a senior programmer and CTO of Praxis Language in Shanghai, China. In the year 2000, he had a Bachelor of Arts degree in International Relations and in the year 2002, he had a Master's of Arts degree in Political Economics. He contributed to streamlining back-end lesson production systems to more than half of the number of staffs needed to operate content production systems while simultaneously managing online front-end web development and product releases. In 2008, he was a programmer and admin at Language Systems Limited in Beijing, China. Now, as I follow, in 2011, he met with this guy, Richard Paris, in China. So, who is this guy? This guy has a Bachelor of Arts degree in Mathematics and Philosophy, which I think is a weird combination. And he also has a Master of Arts degree in Philosophy. Seems like he finally straightened up, eh? So in 2002, he was a software developer and consultant at Risk Wizard in Melbourne, Australia. In 2007, he was the founding CTO of Idan's group in Beijing, China. 2017 is the year these two make us talk about them today. So after these two met, presumably in 2011, they were into cryptocurrency. And by cryptocurrency, we're talking about Bitcoin. So they saw the problems associated with Bitcoin and one of them that you may think about is its scalability. Now you need to watch this video on the blockchain trilemma to understand what I am talking about. I will leave the link to it in the description. So these two looked at this problem and in 2017, they came up with an idea that could solve this problem. Now to make this very simple for everyone to understand, all infrastructure cryptos that we know operate by a consensus mechanism. Now, in most cases, the consensus mechanism is either proof of stake or proof of work. And yes, you may watch my video on consensus mechanism. I will leave the link in the description. Now, I know most people don't go to watch these videos because, well, you just want to know what to invest in. But I guarantee you, it is very important for you to understand before investing your money. Most people don't understand these things and they go and invest and lose a ton of money and blame it on creators online. You have to understand your money and your investment is your responsibility. So it is your responsibility and your job to understand what you are investing in. In the proof of stake consensus mechanism, people put the coins of the native cryptocurrency at stake. Literally, they lock up these coins to become a validator on that blockchain. Now, how are they paid? They are paid by the fees of that blockchain, which means the more fees there are on that blockchain, the more these validators will gain. 
This will incentivize all validator nodes. Now, nodes are simply computers on the blockchain. I don't know why they call them nodes. It's just computers. It incentivizes these nodes to ensure that there are more fees so that they will have more profit. So these are the things that Richard and David saw as a problem. So they were looking for a way to make something different from this. In the proof of work consensus mechanism, instead of locking up coins, people put in computational power, i.e. hash power. So if you have a higher hash power, that's higher computational power, you have a higher chance to validate a given block. Hopefully, I am making this as understandable as possible. Now, in proof of work consensus mechanisms, there is a 51% attack rule, which means to input a wrong transaction onto the blockchain, 51% of all the nodes of that network have to all agree that it is a valid transaction. Now, you need to watch this video. It would make it a lot easier for you to understand. So we see that you need to gain 51% of the network to fully dominate the network or input wrong transactions. This is extremely difficult. So these two brought up a model that will not only eliminate these problems, but also increase network scalability. You will understand a lot about scalability from here. So the network that those two conceived in 2017 is called the Saito network. And of course, what is Saito? Saito in the most simple terms is a layer 1 web 3.0 network that delivers blockchain applications directly into your browser. Now this layer 1 network does support decentralized social media, gaming projects and instant messaging. It had an ICO on the 29th of May 2021 where it raised 2.4 million dollars. Now it's important to note that its ICO price was 0.004 dollars which makes it about 13.5 to 14x at the time of making this video. This indicates that it hasn't moved much. Most ICOs do about 100x. It has a vesting schedule of 12 months divided into four for private and seed investors which means these investors will be dumping their bags at any time during this year. Also note that most investors may want to dump their bags before we move into the bear market, and I suspect that that might come by mid next year. Now, what I find particularly intriguing about this crypto, which is so undervalued, is that its blockchain size is in the petabytes. Now, a thousand terabytes make a petabyte, and a thousand gigabytes make a terabyte. So you understand how much info one blockchain of this crypto can contain. Just for a quick comparison, Ethereum's blockchain is about 991 gigabytes, approximately one terabyte. So you see how much potential there is here. The targeted problem that I think this crypto solves is instead of rewarding miners and stakers in both proof of work consensus mechanisms and proof of stake consensus mechanism blockchains respectively, it rewards internet service providers. So each computer on the network providing internet access is incentivized to keep the network running and secure because this is the way that these computers get paid, i.e. you get paid. And each transaction on this network is taxed. So if you want to input wrong transactions on this blockchain, on many nodes or many computers, you will need to pay a lot of tax. This makes you to pay in a lot of money to steal money because all the transactions will have a tax. So you have no incentive to steal. Hopefully, I am making sense. If we understand that each computer on the network providing internet access is paid based on the service that they provide, then it directly fosters scalability. If we could summarize all of this, then we would say that the key difference between Saito and every other, say, crypto infrastructure crypto is its reward system. Coupled with the fact that it is not at all monopolistic. In Ethereum, for example, you need to provide 32 ETH to become a validator on the Ethereum network. Now, not everyone can provide 32 ETH, which is why people have staking pools. Anyway, Saito could also offer a decentralized alternative to the Lightning Network for off-chain Bitcoin payments. 
Now, Bitcoin sacrificed scalability for decentralization and security. So, the Lightning Network is a layer 2 solution for Bitcoin's scalability problem. As earlier mentioned, in proof of work or in proof of stake systems, we have a 51% rule. It is important to also note that it is not easy to just forge any transaction on these networks. It has never been done before. For you to hack the Bitcoin network, you will need to hack 51% of all computers on the Bitcoin network at the exact same time. So this is near to impossible. But what Saito is trying to do is eliminate that near, eliminate that tiny percentage of it being possible by bringing up another solution where you will need to pay to input these transactions because they will have a tax. Hopefully, this is clear. Saito has venture capitalists like Spark Capital and GBV. Pro tip, venture capitalists show you that they see value in any given investment, be it cryptocurrency or real estate. However, they do not have the same motives like retail investors, which means when they see profits, they will take them. So venture capitalists show you that they see a lot of value because they do a ton of research before investing. But you should be careful because they will take profits whenever they are in profits. Significant profits, of course. I'm talking about this crypto now because it is still very early. A 13x or a 14x is nothing to venture capitalists. They will not risk it all for a 13x. They look for the 100x's, the 1000x's. So always look at the ICO price or the seed or private sale price before investing. This will be a big guide for your profit taking. Now, the crypto also has a ton of other investors, which you can see here. And now let's talk about its tokenomics and the price potential that this crypto presents. Now, its token distribution shows that it had about a 1% public sale. We'll come back to that in a moment. About a 13% private sale and a 10% seed round. Now, seed round is simply the first initial investment in that crypto. So, the first people to invest in any cryptocurrency are the seed investors. So, its foundation has 20% and its core team has 15%. Rewards, 15%. Strategic partners, 10%. Contributors here, we have 15%. I will come back to this in a moment. Its price as of now is 4 cents. Its market cap is 52 million. That makes it approximately micro cap. Circulating supply is 1 billion. Total supply, 3 billion. Maximum supply, 10 billion. Now, the daily volume is $3 million. Now, this simply refers to how much money worth of Saito has been traded in the past 24 hours. This here is Algorand having the same maximum supply as Saito. Now, if Saito was to equal Algorand, it will be about 192x. If it was to equal Cardano, we'll be talking about a 960x. This means turning $1,000 to $960,000. Of course, this all seems like a fairy tale to most people who are not versed with figures in cryptocurrency. If it does not go as high as 1000x and only goes about 10% of that, it will still be 100x. Now, my concerns, and I think you should have some concerns too. Now, the first concern I have is the circulating supply. Only about 10% of it is in circulation. My second concern is the public sale here, only about a percent of this crypto was sold to retail investors. Another thing that I'm concerned about is the seed and private investors. Now, these investors have a 12-month vesting schedule. Now, in this schedule, they basically sell every three months. This may keep on suppressing the price for 12 months. So, in this month, November, they can sell their tokens and they'll have two more times to sell. Keep in mind, we are headed for the bear market and they too will want to sell their tokens before we go into the bear market. By them selling, they will keep on crashing the price. 
Now, of course, this does not mean that they must sell. They may see a lot of value in it and they prefer to hold. Another problem that I see with it is its website and the marketing. Like this is me here literally waiting for the website to load up. Like I've been here for about three minutes and you can see the bar here still loading. Plus, I don't see a lot of people talking about this. The website finally loaded up. So when you come here, you will see games. I will leave a link to the website in the description. But the website does load fast on computer. So I think it's not optimized for mobile. And I tried playing some games here yesterday and that too did not go so well. They also have an instant messaging feature, which I used yesterday. And I was surprised to find someone and it actually worked well. So I know my final thoughts may have scared a lot of people away from this crypto. But, and the but is a very big but, if this crypto actually solves the scalability problem, the adoption will be massive. I looked at it and I noticed that there are only two of them, the founders, working on this crypto. It is a very new project. The idea was conceived in 2017, but relatively it is a very new project because its implementation only happened in 2021. If this crypto actually does what it says it can do and gains more adoption, its potential will be unfathomable. So this is basically the type of investment that you can consider for the big if. If it does goes through with what it has set out to do, what will happen to its price will be unimaginable. Of course, I am not saying that you should go and buy. Always note that this is not financial or investment advice. This is just me sharing my research. It has nothing whatsoever to do with financial advice. Now, the best place to get this is on get.io. That is where you will have high liquidity. So now I want to hear what you think about this. Do you think it is worth it? Do you think this crypto gets to be the one we regret in the future for not getting it in its most early stages? Because the concerns that I just mentioned are the wrong sides of it. But it is the same concerns that you would have been having about Bitcoin in 2010. So I would say that this crypto is worth considering because fundamentals is key. It is proposing a different model to the scalability problem. So leave me your thoughts down below. If you did like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you are new and see you in the next video.